if you're about to start cooking your Thanksgiving feast and you're starting to panic just a little bit, Tom Valenti is here to keep you calm. He is executive chef and owner of New York's West Restaurant. Always a pleasure to see you, Tom. Good to see you, Harry. Panic. Always. We do it once a year. Yeah, because you know people aren't used to all of the things they're trying to do, all the things, try, maybe trying to accomplish a little too much in one day. Well, the, 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 I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that you, if you position it properly, you have several days right. leading into the day because, face it, you only have so many burners, so many ovens <laughs> right. in your house. Yes. And, you know, frankly, your guests don't want you stack, shackled to the stove right. all day while they're... You know, having fun. Yeah, what a radical concept to be able to socialize a little bit with you your think? guests on Thanksgiving Day. You think? Now what, do you, now, what are you putting inside this turkey? Now, you know, I approach a turkey like a big chicken. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't, I tend not to stuff it, but what I am stuffing it with is herbs, garlic, right. butter. I seasoned the cavity mm -hmm. with salt and pepper as well as the outside. Right. Very simply, I took some uh, cloves of garlic that I cut whole heads that I cut in half. Right. Just put them down in the bottom of the pan. put those in, yeah. Yep. Then I'm just going to tie it off. Yeah. You know, cause some people do that whole thing where they s put butter inside the skin and all that. Not necessarily. This well, is your more traditional way. You know, it's it's, it's kind of my approach, and I, and I think that you know, there are so many variables right. with cooking turkey, um, whether it's frozen or if it's fresh. Mm. You know, the FDA requirement is that it's cooked to 165 degrees. Right. You know, that's the safety place. Sure. So, so all right, so you tie, tie this guy's legs up, you throw a little, uh, just chicken stock? It's just a little chicken broth just to get it going. Right. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, if you want to just pop it into that oven I'd for I'd be me. happy to. Thank you. All right. See you later, Tom. Ooh, put on pump. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, advanced cooking. Right. You know, th I'll give you an example. Here's uh, the stuffing. Yeah. And what I did the day before is I browned the sausage. Right. I cut and toasted the bread. Right. I toasted my pine nuts. Look at I that. I cooked my vegetables. How smart is that? Because just, you know what? This morning, there's there there are people in kitchens, even as we speak, and the sweat is starting to pour down their brows because they're trying to accomplish all of this. reinforcements. Yes. I was told yes. that as many people may need to do on this Thanksgiving when they realize they've got a lot on their plate, right. it's okay to bring in some help. So I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Put me to work. I'm happy because I had a full head of hair before this segment. Really? <laughs> so did Harry. Rally the troops. Rally the all troops. All right. So let's tell you what. If you guys want to add... Right. Make, stuffing into our bowl. So now, so you did all this ahead of time. So all you have to do is just pour it together just, in the bowl. Putting it together, putting it into a, right. a casserole, and popping it in the oven. And here, if you want to use just a little good. bit of this warm chicken stock, that's a good chicken idea. stock on the stovetop somewhere yes. is always helpful. But, help you know them. what? Because when in doubt, throw in some chicken stock. That's it. All right. That's I know. It. Seriously. Now moving to the next thing, stovetop management. For example, right. I'm making the mashed potatoes. I've done them ahead of mm -hmm. time. Right. But I've got them in a double boiler which keeps it moist. Well, because the other problem, because if, if the potatoes are right on the fire, yes, even if it's the lowest possible, they're going to get burned somehow, They'll burn, right? they'll burn, exactly. Yeah. So what I did was I cooked the potatoes in advance, and to finish, I'm adding warm milk, mm -hmm. always warm milk and always cold, finely, finely cubed butter. Oh, very good. Yeah, that helps to emulsify, so right. you get, don't get those... Uh, yeah. And if, and if you're not a real potato masher, because this is one of my actual areas of expertise, you don't mash them too much. Lumps because, are good. Well, the lumps are texture. Okay. Yeah, yeah, texture is good. Because the other part is there's just the, the chemical makeup of potatoes. Flips. If you mash them too much, that's when it gets sticky. They get gummy. And ha yeah. that's, that is another reason why you cut the butter in such a fine way. Look at that. Um, oh, that's, you know what, those look really good. Yeah, are those so, you passing know the, the Harry test? Yes, they are. It's huge. Well, you know, the fact is, is that, again, you can do this and you can leave them on the stovetop at a low flame for right. two hours. Yeah. So you can set that aside. This is done. It's in the oven. Right. Wow. Um, we're feeling much better about next Thanksgiving already. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. So what's what's the next order of business here? Well, we've got some uh, we've got some finished gravy here. I'm going to pull the bird out. Oh, okay. And I'm going to put it over here. All right. Now, you know, part of the quandary of the bird, aside from cooking, is that's kind of my biggest quandary. I'll be honest. Well, be making sure it's cooked. Part of the cooking. Yeah. Again, 165 degrees is what we're looking for. So you tented this. I tented it. Yeah. From the beginning, or when do you tent? No, it? you know what I do is I traditionally start at a very high temperature. Okay. About 450, 475 degrees, just to get that nice color. Right. And then I'll lower the temperature significantly. Right. So, so it, it kind of rides slow. gently, and if it gets too dark, then I'll put the tent over. Slow and steady wins the race. That's 
That's a good. wise, wise That's good. tortoise once right. showed us. Okay. You know, now... So you, normally you would take this and, and take it off of the rack, and they should always let the bird rest for what? A oh, good 20, 20, or 20 or 30 minutes. Right. Now what I've done here is, I remember I put those yeah, oh, raw heads of garlic. What yeah. I do is, when I set to make oh, my yum. gravy, uh -huh. I, I grab a couple of these puppies. Yeah. And Stick them, them right in, there. in there. Yeah, it really, mm. really helps the flavor. Yeah, because they've been sitting down there in the in the in the drippings from the turkey. Right. Those garlic. That, that's full of flavor. Those are super garlic cloves now. Now you want to you want to give that one a little buzz for me with this uh, this wireless handheld mechanism. <laughs> wow. So you press it on the top. Oh. Okay. Keep it away from children. <laughs> what? Yeah. Why'd you give it to me? <laughs> Nicely done. You know, now as far as presentation of the bird, right. you know, we don't want to we don't want to go against tradition, but you know, quite often, it's sliced at the table. But it takes so long. It takes long, and everybody's sitting there with their knife and fork, and they're like. I also feel like you're opening yourself up at that point. You think? There's a lot that could go wrong. You think? <laughs> Just a little. You think? Just a little. Right, what we do as chefs is we like to take it off the bone. I like it. And present it in such a way that when it hits the table, everybody can eat. Yeah. And you are a professional. I would remind everyone at home. <laughs> he is. So you may want to go with his thinking. Yeah. You know, and with the chicken stock, if you're worried about it being a little dry, you just ladle a little, little bit of the gravy and chicken stock over it, and you can keep that in a very, very low oven. There you go. Uh, go ahead and go to work here. Okay. Thank you so much. Always appreciate uh, you stopping by the show. Pleasure and to I be think here. Uh, maybe. If not for this year, people will keep notes for next year. I think so. Go. I yeah. think so. Well, we've got lots of them on our website. Right. Tom Valenti, thank you so much. Do appreciate it, sir.